first came to Western Australia in 2007 with two Austrian friends, two kite surfers, and we bought a car and we drove to a very remote spot that we had heard about, and I found paradise. My friends obviously didn't quite feel the same because they didn't go in the water and they were quite grumpy. So I said to them, okay guys, I'll make you a deal. You take the car, take the tent. And so I just stayed there for another one and a half months in my little tent in the desert. The next town was 200 k's away. That's when I really fell in love with Western Australia. Reading Mother Nature gets a whole new level when you go really remote. There is no forecast, there's no one you can call because I'm completely on my own and I have to adapt. Seeing a strange cloud coming your way and maybe thinking that might shut down the wind because if I don't go in now I might end up out to sea or I might have to swim in with all my gear. It's sometimes a very fine line of being brave and being stupid. <laughs> It's obviously not only Mother Nature that teaches you lessons when you go and leave home. It's also the people you meet and one of the most amazing, most inspiring people I've met is Jamin. 
I don't ever remember the big moment where someone tells you, oh, you're never going to walk again or anything like that. I know everyone seems to have that moment. I'm sure they did tell me what my prognosis was, but part of me probably knew when I was laying on the sand dunes that my life was never going to be the same again. What has happened to me is irreversible and there's no point in dwelling on it. You know, I just tried to set myself a goal of just doing the best I could with the abilities that I did have. I mean, the life I have now, we could never have dreamt possible. Me being married with two children. Yeah, like JC. I really credit working with my mental health because it allowed me to focus on you know, actually doing something with my life, becoming a contributing member of society again, as opposed to sitting around the house and feeling sorry for myself. So I went back into the office every day, started answering the phones, taught myself how to type with my knuckles. But droning really gave me that, just being able to film dolphins in their natural environment. It's cool for anyone to be able to do that, but for someone in my situation, I can sit in a car park and then fly the drone 400 metres up the beach to where I can't walk to and film these incredible encounters or just film Jess walking along the beach with the kids. So even though I'm not there physically, I am there, you know, almost because the drone's alongside them and I can see what they're doing. All righty, Saturday afternoon, you're on Gabby. Three metres swell, you'll be getting barrel, bazzard. <laughs> bazzard. It takes me an hour and a half every morning, or maybe an hour and 45 minutes with my carers just to get from my bed, showered, and then into my wheelchair, you know what I mean? So like, droning is easily accessible to me, you know, I can get the drone and with assistance I can go and fly it, or more recently now I've learned how to change my batteries myself, which was only about three months ago. I can drive a vehicle, so I can go and drone independently which is another beauty of it. It's like one thing that I can do on my own without always having carers or support workers or having to ask Jess for help. But it's nice to be able to do something independently like that. Life is not easy for anyone, but it's not too hard either. I think life is the most incredible gift we're given. The one nice thing about filming a subject like kite surfing, she goes back out, she turns around and you, you sort of learn the pattern that she's doing on the day. You can position the drone and try and get your best angles of it all. Spectacular is the only way you can describe it, and uh, it's always good fun to spend time behind the drone sticks filming a new subject. To share this time, although we are not sitting next to each other in the lineup or we're not cutting around each other, it's something I've never experienced. Yeah, we share the stoke. We share the stoke. He's up in the air, and I know he's sitting there in the car park, and we can feel it too. It is see some of the footage where you like. It's just so silhouette-y. You're riding the wave and you can see the, the wave building as you're like going in on it. It looks really cool, hey? It's a unique experience, very unique. I think it's very difficult to find something that compares.
or the people you meet. Everyone leaves their mark and changes you in a way, like every trip changes you. Seek your freedom and write your own chapter. <laughs>